Hi, so today I wanted to show you guys a really awesome science resource. As a science teacher, I love finding new things that I can use in my classroom. Um, I found Legends of Learning a few months ago. I piloted it in my classroom just to see how students would like it. I had really great feedback. And so this year as I'm planning for the next school year, I am starting to set up playlists. And so I wanna show you guys how I create those and the process I go through to kind of find resources and games that I like. Um, I teach high school biology. Legends of Learning is geared more towards middle and elementary schools. Now that doesn't mean that it's not a resource for high school teachers because as um, high school teachers we get kids that have not seen the material since middle school and so Legends of Learning is great because it can be used as a review resource um, both before they learn the material and after they've gone back over it and relearned because that often happens. Um, and it's got a lot of really great fun games all in one area for for kids to access and so I love it it's been really great um, and I'm just gonna take you guys through how to create um, and use your playlists so I'm a biology teacher I teach um, ninth grade biology and honors biology so that's a life science topic in in um, in the world of science. So I would click here after I sign up to life science. Um, this is organized by the next generation science standards and that went really quickly so we're gonna go back there. Um, the next generation science standards are the standards to be following if you are teaching science in the United States. They are um, organized by topics and so I am teaching ecology right now or I'm getting ready to teach ecology so I would just choose something that I found interesting or that was aligning to what we're learning. Interactions and ecosystems is something we will cover so I'll click right here and what it takes me to is some games that are available for me to look at. First thing that I usually do is I look at all the games that are available on this topic and I am usually deciding, am I going to use this as an instructional tool or am I going to use this as a review and questioning tool? Um, those games are easy to identify because they either have an I next to them for instructional or a Q next for questioning. Um, questioning means that they're going to have a lot of multiple choice questions as the kids are going through to kind of test their knowledge. It's great for review. It also can be useful while they're learning, but I prefer to use those for review. Instructional is going to um, kind of teach the material and help reinforce it as they're going through. Um, for me, it's more going to be review. So let's just say, hey, I want to check out Leap Along with Leaf. So first or next thing I'm going to look at is what grades is it best for? Like I said, my students sometimes haven't seen material um, that on like ecology since about seventh grade and so if it says grades six seven or eight those are things I'm going to be looking at and this is grade seven so that could be really useful for me I like to check out the reviews especially the student reviews and see did students even like this because if it doesn't have very good reviews I don't want to try that with my students um, and it looks like hey there's uh, over half the students gave it a pretty high score. Um, teachers also seem to, to enjoy it. You can read teacher comments if you would like. Um, those can be useful. The other thing that I really, really encourage um, people that are planning out or wanting to use Legends of Learning for is looking at the curriculum. So it's going to give you the vocab words. Um, if I'm planning, I want to make sure that it's covering vocab words that I'm going to be using, which these are all words that I'm definitely going to be using. It also gives you these questions before the game and questions after the game. I love this because I can use these in KWL charts, entrance and exit tickets as checks for understanding as we're periodically going through. There's so many uses for them that it's really a great resource and I didn't have to do that. So um, those are really useful. It also gives me the main concepts that they're covering. So in this game, it's gonna cover all nine main concepts. If I click to see more, I'd show you the rest of them. Um, and I wanna to check to make sure that those are the main concepts that I'm also wanting to hit on. So because it's aligned with NGSS, the Next Generation Science Standards, it should be everything that I wanna cover. You can also check out the game details. That just tells you it's a questioning game, what type of difficulty it is. 
Um, once I have decided I like the game, I can try it out. If I click try game, my internet's working super slow today, so it would take forever to load. But I can try the game out just as the students would see it and, and see if, yes, I like the way it's running, it does a great job, etc., etc. And then I can add this game to a playlist if I really like it. So let's say I add this game to a playlist. So it's going to take me to this screen. Now I'm going to need to um, do a couple of things right now so I can show you. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up this link in a separate um, window because that's going to be the student link that I would need. Um, I'm going to hit launch. Okay. Launch allows the students to play the play it. And then once it's launched and I'm watching and I only launch it when I'm in class, um, I can go ahead and see how the students are performing. Now, as a student, they're going to go in, they're going to log in and learn. Um, assuming they're at school, they're going to play at school. They put in the code, which is um, before I hit launch, it's usually found in this area right here. You set that up as a teacher when you're um, signing up. I hit next and it's got apparently I've added this twice to a playlist, but it's got the the game that I want them to play and then they would click it and go through and once they're into the game assuming I clicked the correct one um, it's going to give me the students information and how they're doing on the questions as they go through um, and I have a post on my blog that I can link in the bottom that talks about the, the students results so once it's in the playlist, it's there. Kids have access to it. They can play it. Um, and you're going to get real-time data on them and know, okay, this is what the majority of my students know. This is what the majority do not know. Um, one thing that was a little interesting for me on playlists is that in order for it to actually be working, it has to be set to live. Um, in order to set it to live, you have to hit this open and then you would set it to live. Now I've already got that one open as well. I've got about a million open, but, um, and then that's when it would show up on the students thing. You would have to have it set to live. Um, and you can add more than one, um, game to a playlist. So I can go back in to, um, to the games and I can add more games so that when the windows pop up the students are able to see three different games and I can say okay I want you guys to play interactions and ecosystems and then go to um, parasitic relationships and then go to competition among species and they can go through those games they also are timed so some games only last like 10 minutes some last 30 minutes which is great for planning um, but that's really kind of how you set this all up um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments section, and I hope that you have a beautiful day.